Welcome to the video on Banking Awareness from CareerRight.com. In this video, we are going to cover the Apex Banks in India, which includes the Reserve Bank of India and all the other Apex bodies, development finance institutions and the development banks in India. All these questions have a very high probability to appear in various exams such as IBPS, SBI, RBI, GIC, NIC, etc. So let us now begin with the questions. Who was the first Indian governor of the Reserve Bank of India? The first governor of the Reserve Bank of India was Sir Osborne Smith, but the first Indian governor of the Reserve Bank of India was Sir C. D. Deshmukh or Chintaman Dwarkanath Deshmukh. He held the smooth transition of Reserve Bank of India from private organization to the state-owned organization. He was appointed in the year 1943. He also helped in the establishment of Industrial Finance Corporation of India which focused on the promotion of rural credit. Subsequently, he served as the finance minister in the union cabinet from the year 1950 to 1956. Which among the following is the instrument used by RBI under general credit control? The correct answer is C. Bank rate. Now bank rate also known as the discount rate is the rate of interest charged by RBI for providing funds or loans to the banking system. Increase in bank rate increases the cost of borrowing by commercial banks which results in reduction of credit. Indirectly, it results in decline of supply of money in the market. Increase in bank rate is a symbol of RBI tightening the monetary policy. The next question is, which is the minimum lending rate decided by RBI which shall be adopted by all public sector banks? Base rate is the minimum rate set by the Reserve Bank of India below which the banks are not allowed to lend any money to its customers. Base rate is decided in order to enhance transparency in the credit market and the money market to ensure that banks pass on the lower cost of fund to their customers. The next question is a concept based question. What will be the impact if the RBI reduces the bank rate by 1%? To understand this, we need to understand what is market liquidity. Market liquidity is the market's ability to facilitate an asset being bought or sold quickly in the market without drastically having to change its price. Indirectly, it means a stable market. Now, bank rate is the rate at, at which the banks borrow loans from the RBI in the long term. So, if the RBI reduces the bank rate, the supply of money will get high in the country. Banks will be able to get loans from RBI at a cheaper rate and in turn, will they will give the loans to the people at a lower rate of interest. So indirectly, the supply of money will go up in the country. So the correct answer would be more liquidity in the market. The next question is, what is the full form of CRR? It is another very important question related to the monetary policy of RBI. CRR stands for cash reserve ratio. Cash reserve ratio is a certain percentage of bank's deposits NDTL net demand and time liability deposits out of which banks are required to keep a certain percentage with the RBI in the form of reserves or balances. In simple words, if a bank has 100 rupees and the CRR is 4%, the bank will have to hold rupees 4 with the Reserve Bank of India and the rest 96 can be used for its other functions. CRR is one of the quantitative tools under the monetary policy. The next question is on which rate basis overnight money is needed by the bank from the Reserve Bank of India. Overnight money or very short term money is borrowed by the banks under the MSF facility. Now MSF stands for marginal standing facility. Now this rate refers to the rate at which the banks can borrow funds overnight from the RBI against some of the government and the approved securities. 
Now banks borrow these funds only under the condition that there is a severe ca cash shortage or there is an acute shortage of liquidity in the market. This facility was introduced in the monetary policy of the year 2011 and 12. It came into effect from May of 9, 2011. As of April, the MSF is 6.50%. Under whose chairmanship did the RBI constitute a working group for making balance of payments manual? Now, this committee was formed under Deepak Mohanty. Deepak Mohanty is an Indian economist working at the Reserve Bank of India. He holds the post of executive director at the head office of RBI in Mumbai. Apart from this, few another working committees are Working Group on Import Data Processing and Monitoring System. This one is headed by A.K. Pandey. Another important working committee is Working Group on Interest Rate Options, which is headed by P.G. Apte from RBI. Which is a tool that helps RBI to stabilize the money supply and the prices of government securities in India. Now the tool which is used here is the OMO or the Open Market Operation. Now Open Market Operation is an instrument of the monetary policy. It involves buying or selling of government securities from or to the public or the banks. Now RBI sells the government securities to control the flow of credit and buys the government security to increase the credit flow. Open Market Operation makes the bank rate policy effective and maintains the stability in the government securities market. Apart from this, here EPQ stands for Economic Production Quantity and EOQ stands for Economic Order Quantity. The next question is how many deputy governors are there in the RBI? Now, RBI is India's central banking institution. It is governed by a 21 member Central Board of Directors Committee. It, cons it consists of the governor and four deputy governors. The name of the four deputy governors of RBI presently are as follows. B.P. Kanungo, S.S. Munra, N.S. Viswanathan and Viral Acharya. Apart from this, the Central Board of Directors Committee contains two finance ministry representatives and ten government nominated directors and four directors which represent the local boards at the Mumbai, Chennai, Delhi and Kolkata. Among the following, which is not the subsidiary of the Reserve Bank of India? At present, RBI has only four subsidiaries, which are DICGC, NABART, BRB, NMPL, and NHB. So our correct answer over here is IDBI. IDBI Bank is not a subsidiary of the Reserve Bank of India. This could be one of the trick questions in the interview. So always keep in mind that IDBI at present is a commercial bank. Earlier it was a development bank of India, but at present it is only a commercial bank. Here, DICGC stands for Deposit Insurance and Credit Guarantee Corporation of India. NABARD is the apex body for agriculture. It stands for National Bank for Agriculture and Rural Development. BRB and MPL is a subsidiary of RBI, which, re which is related to the issuance of mudra or the money or coins in India. It stands for Bharti Reserve Bank Road Mudran Private Limited. And NHB is the apex body for housing development in India. It stands for National Housing Bank. Which among the following scheme was formulated by the Reserve Bank of India? Jandan Yojana and the Pradhan Mantri Mudra Yojana were launched by the Government of India under the leadership of Narendra Modi. Banking Ombudsman Scheme was launched by the Reserve Bank of India in the year 2006. It was introduced under Section 35A of the BRA or the Banking Regulation Act 1949. This scheme is a mechanism created by the Reserve Bank of India to address the complaints raised by its bank customer. It is run directly by the RBI to ensure that the consumer protection in the banking industry. Boutique Financing Scheme is another scheme which was launched by the State Bank of India. Moving on with the next question, when did the National Housing Bank start its operation? Now, National Housing Bank is the apex institution or the premier institution of housing finance in India. It is a wholly owned subsidiary of RBI. It was founded on July 9, 1988. It was set up under the National Housing Bank Act of 1987. 
At present, the headquarters of National Housing Bank are in New Delhi, and the current head is Mr. Sri Ram Kalyanaman. The NHB or the National Housing Bank registers, regulates, and supervises all the housing finance companies and keeps a surveillance on on-site, off-site maintenance and coordinates with the other regulators in India. The next question related to National Housing Bank is the performance of which scheme does the NH NHB monitor? Now, the NHB is the apex institution for housing finance in India. It is also a subsidiary of RBI. Now, it monitors the performance of Golden Jubilee Rural Housing Finance Scheme. It was implemented through the scheduled bank HDFC and other cooperative sector institutions. Another very prominent and important scheme which was formulated by the NHB is the EEHS which stands for Energy Efficient Housing Scheme. Now this scheme was launched in 2011 for lending towards energy efficient housing units or buildings. The total disbursement made under this scheme was Rs 81.36 crore at that time. Who has allowed banks to tie up with insurers to sell three products each from life, non-life and health insurance segment? Now basically what it wants to ask is who is the prominent authority or who is the apex body for insurance in India? So the answer is C. IRDA which stands for Insurance Regula Regulatory and Development Authority of India. Now, the tie-up between bank and insurance company is called as bank insurance or the bank insurance model BIM. In this partnership or relationship between a bank and an insurance company, the insurance company uses the bank as a sales channel in order to sell insurance products to its customers. This is another very important question related to banking awareness as well as the insurance awareness section. When was the IRDA constituted? The IRDA was constituted or founded in the year 1999 as an autonomous body under the IRDA Act of 1999. Now the IRDA is an autonomous statutory agency tasked with regulating and promoting insurance and reinsurance sector in India. At present, the headquarters of IRDA are in Hyderabad, Telangana. And the current head is Mr. T. S. Vijayan. He is the chairman of IRDA. Who regulates the mutual funds in India? Not only the mutual funds, but the securities market, share and stock market, everything is regulated by the Securities and Exchange Board of India, SEBI. So our correct answer is B. Before SEBI came into existence, the controller of capital issues was the regulatory authority. SEBI was founded on 12th of April 1992 and the headquarters of SEBI are located in Mumbai. The current head chairman of SEBI is Mr. U. K. Sinha. The next question is E in MSME sector stands for. MSME stands for micro, small and medium enterprises. So the answer is B. Enterprises. It is important to know the banking terms with a point of view of exams. Under the MSME D Act of 2006, the definition of MSME or micro, small and medium enterprises are as follows. Now, micro enterprise is an enterprise where investment in plant, machinery and services does not exist rupees 25 lakh. In, in small enterprise, the investment lies more than 25 lakh but less than 5 crores. Statements related to SIDBI are given below. We have to pick the wrong statement. This is a new pattern of question. To answer this type of question, one must be really updated with the organization, the banking awareness section and the GK section. Here, the correct answer is, or should I say the wrong statement about SIDBI is D. Its head office is in Hyderabad. This is a wrong statement. The correct statement is the head office of SIDB is in Lucknow. Now SIDB stands for Small Industries Development Bank of India. 
It was established on April of 2nd, 1990. The present head of SIDBI is Dr. Shatrapati Sevaji. Agricultural Bank of China is one of the big four banks in China. Similarly, which is the apex body in India for agricultural development? The answer to it is very easy. It is C. NABARD. NABARD stands for National Bank for Agricultural and Rural Development. Now, NABARD is set up as an apex development bank in India by the government of India. Its purpose is to mandate for facilitating credit flow for promotion and development of agriculture, cottage and other village industries. It was established in the year 1982 on 12th of July. The headquarters of NABARD are in Mumbai and the current head is Dr. Harsh Kumar Bhanwala. He is the chairman of NABARD at present. Which among the following made the initial contribution for setting up the FIF and the FITF? FIF stands for Financial Inclusion Fund and FITF stands for Financial Inclusion Technology Fund. The correct answer is A. The Government of India, NABARD as well as the Reserve Bank of India. Now, as per the Government of India, the objective of FIF shall be to support development and promotional activities with a view to securing greater financial inclusion. Now this includes particularly the weaker section, low income groups or the backward regions or to, or to say the unbanked or the underbanked areas of India. Similarly, the FITF or the Financial Inclusion Technology Fund. Now the objectives of FITF shall be to enhance the investment in the Information Communication Technology ICT. Now this is aimed at promoting, promoting financial inclusion and also to stimulate the transfer of research and technology in financial inclusion. Which organization provides guarantee to the exporters? As we can see over here, the focus is on exporters. So the answer is B, Export Credit Guarantee Corporation. Now, ECGC of India was established on July 30, 1957. It was established with an objective to provide insurance cover with respect to the risk in export trade. Initially, it was set up as Export Risk Insurance Corporation ERIC in July of 1957. Later on, it was transformed into ECGC or the Export Credit and Guarantee Corporation in the year 1983. The headquarters of ECGC are in Mumbai and the current head, chairman and MD of ECGC is Mrs. Geeta Murlidhar. The next question is, Exim Bank was established in which year? Exim stands for Export Import Bank of India. It is the premier export finance institute in India. It was established in the year 1982. So the correct answer is C. The Exim Bank was established under the Export Import Bank of India Act of 1981. So the Act was passed in 1981 and the bank was established in the year 1982. Its headquarters are in the city of Mumbai and the current head, chairman and MD of Exim Bank is Yaduvendra Mathur. The function of Exim Bank are segmented into several groups. Now these groups are small and medium enterprises, export services, export marketing services, corporate banking, project finance or trade finance, similarly support services group. This is a very important question regarding the IDBI. When was the IDBI transformed into commercial bank from the development finance institution? The answer is 2004. Let us have a look at the timeline of the IDBI bank. The IDBI bank was constituted under IDBI Bank Act of 1964 as a developmental finance institution and it, and it came into being on July 1, 1964. From 1964, it continued to serve as a developmental finance institution for 40 years till the year 2004. Now in the year 2004, it was transformed into a commercial bank. What does the acronym IFCI mean? Now, IFCI Limited or IFCI stands for 
इंडस्ट्रियल फाइनेंस कॉर्पोरेशन ऑफ इंडिया इट वॉज सेटअप इन 1948 एज इंडस्ट्रियल फाइनेंस कॉर्पोरेशन ऑफ इंडिया नाउ इट वॉज अ स्टैचुटरी कॉर्पोरेशन थ्रू द आई एफ सी आई एक्ट ऑफ नाइनटीन फोर्टी एट इट्स ऑब्जेक्टिव वॉज टू प्रोवाइड मीडियम एंड लॉन्ग टर्म फाइनेंस टू द इंडस्ट्री इट वॉज द फर्स्ट डेवलपमेंटल फाइनेंस इंस्टीट्यूशन इन इंडिया एस्टेब्लिश बाय द गवर्नमेंट आफ्टर द इंडिपेंडेंस द करेंट हेड सीईओ ऑफ आई एफ सी आई लिमिटेड इज श्री मलय मुखर्जी विद दिस वी कम टू द एंड ऑफ अवर वीडियो to refer to the text copy of these questions and to practice this test online visit us on careerright.com we will upload more such videos which will help you crack your entrance exams placement test and job interviews to stay updated with the latest videos subscribe our channel please do let us know how do you like this video by commenting in the box below your thoughts are extremely important to us if you like it do share it with your friends If there are any particular topics that you would like us to develop videos on you can send your request to us by commenting in the box below till then stay tuned for the next chapter